So hello and welcome to our uh, first installation after the summer break. We had an unfortunate cancellation last month, but we're catching up with events. And uh, uh, I'm very excited that today uh, we are restarting the seminar series for a consecutive several months to come. Uh, just be reminded that uh, you can find us on uh, the website of swissrn.org slash computational. So that's swissrn.org computational, uh, where you can find our the description of our working group at the Swiss Reproducibility Network, as well as the schedule of the upcoming uh, seminar talks. Uh, as always, today we will also record the session, and if the speaker allows, we will put this on YouTube. Vipin already is flagging his allowance. Very good. Let's maybe wait for the present. Nah, I'm kidding. Uh, we'll uh, we'll put that on YouTube for you to actually watch the recording, and uh, we're looking forward to today's presentation. Uh, today. We're going to hear from uh, Dr. Vipin Sredaran. He is, uh, he is, uh, disclaimer, he works for me. Yes, I know. But uh, on the other hand, he's doing very, very excited work uh, around the deployment and reusability and reproducibility of, uh, of uh, methods in in, in bio, bioinformatics and beyond using interesting tools like having a centralized deployment instance for uh, containers and tools. And I believe this is going to be like, it's sort of like the, the culmination of making methods available, not only across different platforms, but also across different infrastructures, be that HPC, be it cloud, be it uh, any computer or service system where you can deploy a container and have all the installations set up there. But who am I to talk about this topic when we have this expertise in the room? So uh, I am happy to uh, give you the speaker of today, Vipin. Uh, the topic is Singularity Containers in Bioinformatics. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for the Quite nice introduction. So I am gonna uh, share the screen. Uh, I hope you can see. You all can see my slides perfectly, Vipin. Thank you. All right. So yeah, um, uh, I think. Uh, we will start now. Uh, so it's, yeah. Do you want to wait for another one or two minutes to log in? Do you want for two more minutes? Then we can do that. Otherwise, uh, I'm we, do, fine. we do record it for a purpose. Do we? Okay, sure. All right. Yeah, go ahead. So then, um, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so Daniel asked me to talk about uh, the uh, reproducibility seminar series, and uh, I was also looking at uh, what will be the topic uh, that fit for uh, such kind of a seminar series. And um, uh, this is a uh, work which uh, I closely uh, like collaborate with the Galaxy team uh, uh, in uh, in the states and Freiburg. Uh, so in order to build uh, container singularity containers for the bioinformatics uh, uh, bioinformatics uh, tools. So um, so um, so I want to talk about uh, three uh, different uh, things. So uh, like they all are connected, and um, uh, the first one is like. Uh, yeah, how we do the software packaging and uh, giving a brief uh, introduction uh, about um, how that evolved over the time and uh, then um, about the Galaxy platform. And uh, and the third thing is like uh, 
how we can use the existing um, like uh, Fonda kind of uh, environments and uh, how we can build the uh, singularity images uh, for bioinformatics tools in order to execute them in the uh, high performance uh, computing environment. So, um, so I want to give like a, uh, an overview of uh, like a what, a, a, how the software deployment process work or like a, what's the, like um, uh, the, the normal steps uh, in order to um, do the software deployment. So first we will uh, design a prototype and, and then we do like a small prototyping and then uh, once it's ready, then we do the actual coding and then build the software. And um, then we have to deploy this on a, uh, on a local machine or a, an HPC environment. Um, then uh, after the deployment, you, uh, you have to constantly maintain the software code base and um, make sure that it will be running. And then uh, periodically you give updates and add new features. And this is how the whole process works. So um, uh, the, from the software development and deployment, this consists of uh, like a sorry. Uh, this consists of a, a step in between called software packaging. So uh, the whole idea is that you need to uh, uh, pack your software and share to others as well. So in that case, uh, you need to pack it in a form such that you can um, you can think of like a tar file or and then uh, you can share that with the others and then you need uh, you can uh, deploy that on um, the next computer as well so so coming back to the uh, uh, package manager so this is like a package manager is like a okay, this is uh, helping you to resolve all the dependencies uh, on your machine. And then uh, like, let's say, uh, check for the required softwares and uh, any version conflicts of any libraries and then uh, report it. And uh, if no, then uh, it helps you to install the software on your system. So, uh, so the, earliest form of the package manager came out uh, back in like uh, 1993. It's almost like 30 years now uh, after the first release of the Linux distribution that has uh, happened in 1992. And um, uh, some of these early package managers called the Debian package manager or the Red Hat uh, package manager, they are still around and uh, they are still doing the job. Uh, and they, uh, it's, uh, it, I mean, this is quite nice to see that they survived that long uh, in the Linux community. Um, so um, what was the situation or like what was, how this was handled before the package managers? So, um, so, so historically, I think the softwares are like, uh, or the tar, uh, you can think of like the software uh, in a tar file, and then this is kept under a, an FTP site or, um, or some special basic websites and the people uh, try to download it uh, to their uh, site. Uh, and uh, uh, most likely there will be like a, a configure uh, script, which basically, you know, uh, checks on your system and um, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, it will ask for, it will check for all the dependencies required for that software. And um, if that, uh, if the deep, if the configure uh, script is uh, satisfied with the dependencies, then uh, the, um, it will like, uh, you know, uh, it will complete successfully and then create a make file. So if not, it will complain about, yeah, 
there are different libraries. These are uh, like, you know, not available on your system and you have to individually install them uh, in order to uh, like, you know, install the new software. So once the, once you have successful in the configure step, then uh, you will, uh, you can uh, like, you know, uh, execute the make command uh, that will take the make file and then use different sort of um, testing uh, and, uh, uh, and try to uh, make the binaries. Once uh, the make process is completed successfully, then uh, you have to run the make install uh, command. This is the final command uh, in order to, you know, uh, this is the final step in the software installation. And uh, if everything's satisfied with the system, then uh, it will install to the right path according to the permission you have. and. Uh, um, then you can also install that in a, uh, a privileged area or an unprivileged area uh, according to your choice. So this is how, and uh, this is a tedious process. And uh, so you know, it requires time and you have to manually go through the uh, whole process basically in order to understand uh, how, uh, whether the, the this new software is fit into your uh, system. So, uh, so uh, if you, uh, so th th uh, again, here also, I want to talk about a uh, little more about uh, uh, the uh, package um, managers. So, I mean, over the time, uh, like uh, after the first, uh, Linux uh, package manager, the system wide. So the one I'm referring in the right hand side, uh, they are uh, they started evolving like in um, uh, apt get for example for deep, uh, like a Debian based system. They uh, it, back in 1998, I guess uh, they have uh, improved the way that uh, uh, it was. Uh, bill or the package manager was able to resolve the dependencies automatically and then install the package for your system. So at the same time, uh, 1995, uh, um, the Perl programming language stat started its own package manager such that uh, um, you know, all the Perl uh, modules will go into the uh, the CPAN um, repository where uh, they will make constant updates to the uh, such uh, Perl language based packages. So uh, over the, I think um, right after CPAN, uh, Python also started the package manager and uh, yeah, this has been continued and um, Right now, we have like uh, 32 or 36 package managers. I'm not quite sure about the number, but um, uh, there are uh, quite a lot of uh, package managers, and I classified them in and basically in two different categories, like one very specific to the language, and the other one is like very operating system uh, level package managers. Um, so why there was a shift in that direction? Because, um, uh, so Linux also started uh, uh, like uh, um, sending out the distributions every like two years or four years, uh, depending upon different types of uh, like Linux flavors. So uh, what happened is like, uh, uh, you know, um, so, um, so, uh, so the operating system maintenance or maintenance maintaining people were not able to uh, take care about the all different packages are coming out from all different languages. So then, what they did, like the in the distribution of Linux, they take one uh, particular uh, like a, a well-established tested package. And this will be uh, 
uh, this this will be used for like um, uh, you know um, for that particular uh, distribution and if there are like, like any updates then the distribution manager will take care of that package and uh, uh, this will be available as the standard package from the operating system level but on the other hand if you look at if you go to the package manager directly you you will be able to get the latest version of the package which is available from the, uh, the the repository which is owned by the language itself so um when it comes to the uh, uh let's say um uh, so so uh, so around like uh, 2013 so an advanced version of virtualization technology also came along and um, uh, for example here I, I take a docker so i also consider docker also as a kind of uh, package management uh, tool so uh, you can uh, like uh, you can have like a, uh, a software or like a, uh, installed on the uh, docker image and then you can run that on your system so this is also gives an isolated environment and then um, you can uh, install the required software inside the container and then run it so this also works so <laughs> the good part of the modern uh, system or like a modern kind of different kind of package manager is the advantage is that on your system uh, you can have like an application package manager uh, or like a programming language specific uh, package manager and an operating system based package manager so they both sit uh, together and uh, of course you can also have like a, a virtualization based uh, package manager as well or like a virtualization engine also on your system so um yeah so this is sort of the uh a brief history for the uh the software packaging uh so far now and um, yeah maybe there will be new technologies coming uh but for the time being uh i will uh take you to a a, a different um uh a different uh, topic so this is also connected but i will uh, link that so um so back in 2006 um so a project uh, started in back uh, in state in um, penn state university uh, that the whole idea was to give bioinformatics tools uh, give access that to the biologist uh, such that you can access the tool uh, through a browser. So this is the uh, the origin of a Galaxy platform. And uh, this has like a Galaxy is an open source platform uh, that enables the complex data analysis. So uh, the whole idea is that um, um, there are you can run this application on your computer or you can use uh like a, you can use on an hpc system or you can use the public server which is provided from the penn state university so um over the years there have uh, there have been like a huge amount of uh community people contributed to the different features uh to uh, to the galaxy uh, program and this has been um like a, a tremendous help in providing a a, a very a, like a a very um uh interesting uh uh very interesting things in the uh, like interactive environments and uh, in, so you can include uh, many tools and workflows 
and uh, how you can uh, create a workflow and how you can share that workflow and also um, uh, data visualization and uh, in many aspects it, it has been like you know improved over the time and of course the um in uh, uh, the reproducibility so basically it captured all the uh, tool execution parameters and steps and then uh, this will keep inside the system so that you can always go back and rerun the same analysis so uh, so um, I can show you some uh, uh, like uh, how the platform looks like. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw it before. So this is um, uh, this is an interface for uh, Galaxy, and this is the public server which is serving from Penn State University. So here in the blue uh, panel where you can see like available tools on this particular instance. So there are different categories and uh, you can select tools from each of uh, this, uh, this category and then the tool will be loaded over here in the middle panel. And of course, uh, once you select the data, you can see that uh, the selected data or uploaded data or the input data will be stored on your history and this is the the, the third panel and uh, here uh, uh, you can see like a different uh, uh, like a results files once you uh, execute the right tool you want to execute for your uh, input data so there are a couple of uh, Galaxy servers, uh, public uh, Galaxy servers where you can log in and they do have a uh, quota and this is the reason people are like uh, install their own instance and then our institutional instance and then they can do the computation. So here uh, the biologist or the bioinformatician uh, requires no programming skill in order to run a particular tool, which is uh, by default coming along with the Galaxy installation. So uh, we do have an instance running at uh, ETH and the Gunnar's, uh, Gunnar Rush group is uh, supporting this instance. And uh, um, this is one of the public server uh, from the Galaxy. So now, um, so I will stop, but uh, I will stop about the Galaxy there, but uh, of course you can go through the public service and uh, search for your uh, interested tool. Now coming, uh, coming to the Galaxy tool shed. So this is the repository where uh, Galaxy uh, is a, a kind of a, an app store where all the tools are stored so that uh, uh, it can be uh, shared with other Galaxy instance as well. So your Galaxy, if your Galaxy, if you have a Galaxy server and this is connected to the internet, then it can talk to the public Galaxy tool shed and you can install a tool onto your local system uh, by uh, selecting uh, the installation and this this will uh, resolve all the requirements required for that tool and then install it for you on your local system or your local server so back uh, so the so the galaxy tool shed was like uh, was there uh, since 2010 on and um so the, back then, this was one of the uh, best way to share a bioinformatics package to um, someone else, because uh, otherwise you uh, you have to again create a tar file and then uh, you had to put it in a website or you know uh, things like that. And then uh, in this way, you were able to uh, you know create a binary and then you can ship it through the Galaxy toolshed and this will be available to the uh, to the customer. So um, 
uh, in order to uh, in order to uh, contribute to the toolshed, you basically need to uh, create the uh, the installation instructions and in XML format, and then all required softwares, and then this will uh, the, check for the. Uh, quality of uh, the for example the configuration files and everything and then it will automatically add it to the repository so there there are like almost uh, uh, 10 9500 tools available in the tool shed so uh, this is also a good resource with uh, a, a you can search uh, tools uh, based on different uh, domains and uh, yeah it's uh, at the moment uh, primarily giving importance to the uh, the computational biology or bioinformatics domain and of course there are some other like computational chemistry uh, uh, domains as well so uh now I will uh, take you back to the the initial problem where um, we see that okay we we have to package the software and um, uh, over the time yeah there are platforms are coming along with the tools and uh, um, this is all like you know yeah um, there but still it requires some sort of uh, uh, like you know. Uh, effort in order to uh, move, uh, move in a sustainable manner. So in the scientific software community, so we have uh, a different, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, language specific uh, repositories. Yeah, of course, uh, people are like, you know, uh, bound to uh, their interested languages. And uh, sometimes the organizations will also have a, a a particular interest on particular language um yeah still uh we have to uh, we have to see how this will be like you know shaping into the community so um 2000 uh, 2014 i guess uh this is the time around that time um uh 14 to 15 i guess um uh, we were in a one of the galaxy conference in Boston and then we were also thinking about how what kind of standard we can put for the bioinformatics softwares so um, we were having a nice discussion because uh, this was the time uh, uh, docker also came into the play and then um, shall we containerize the software but then docker was like uh, it's very uh, privileged user and uh, you don't have um, uh, like a, it, it, it's not possible at that time to run the docker on a hpc environment so the whole idea won't work there because then well i mean bioinformatics is always uh consider of a large data set processing and then this has to be done on an hpc environment so uh, we were also thinking about like at that time uh, was the discussion was mainly how what kind of uh, standards we have to follow because um the HPC environments are also like different from institutions to institution, and then it ha uh, and uh, we cannot strictly bind to one programming language. Uh, and in order to keep the reproducible science, you have to uh, take care of the multiple different versions of the same tool because um, tools are also getting up to date with the. Uh, uh, different technologies and also in order to accommodate different technologies and also uh, different features as well. So, um, and at the same time, um, people were also thinking about the cloud uh, compatibility. So uh, different cloud providers are also coming into public and private cloud providers are coming into the market and uh, institutions are also setting up the HPC systems in uh, different forms. So we have to think uh, we have to think and uh, like you know think about how we will uh, address all these uh, questions uh, so then um the last point was like okay this 
also it has to be like an easy uh, maintainable piece of software uh, such that I mean, all bioinformatics, bioinformaticians are not like a computer scientist person. And then we have to give a uh, an option to easily handle the uh, the software packages. So I would say uh, like uh, 2000, uh, so 2014 and 15, uh, 15 to 16. So that is the time where the Conda package manager uh, coming into play and um, they are basically this was a huge effort from the uh, the uh, different uh, universities and different institutions and uh, well, individual contributors as well and uh, uh, so people started building uh, like uh, conda uh, packages and uh, this has uh, uh, become like a sort of uh, a standard way to package your software. And uh, uh, by uh, by the time uh, Conda arrived with the package manager, so they uh, take care of the basic uh, Python or different programming languages or workflow managers like uh, SnakeBank. Uh, uh, all these uh, packages uh, they were able to put uh, in the main channel and then uh, I think 2016 uh, the Bioconda consortium or they uh, came along with uh, all sort of bioinformatics packages. So um, this was an extra boost to uh, how we had uh, with um, uh, different package managers and uh, how we will uh, create the isolated environment to hold the, uh, uh, the software tools and uh, uh, use along with the workflow engine. They are also like uh, started uh, coming along to process a uh, large data set uh, on bioinformatics field. Uh, so um, uh, I want to uh, briefly tell you how um, a Conda package uh, requirement file looks like. So this is a, an example software uh, we wrote in, uh, back in 2016 uh, in order to understand the uh, translational efficiency um, from a ribosequencing data. And uh, uh, this is... Uh, pretty much very simple uh, uh, tool. And then uh, here, basically, you have to uh, mention some metadata information. And uh, then you say that, OK, this is the place where you're going to get the uh, software package. You can directly get from Git, uh, GitHub. And then uh, you say, OK, this is the build environment. And um, uh, you, have, uh, you have to provide the requirement list where you can say that, okay, these are the uh, packages which require to run this particular uh, tool. And then of course you can include tests inside the um, package. And then you can also uh, use some information about the, uh, the metadata about the package and people can uh, search for it. So this is the simple uh, recipe file you have to create uh, in addition to your package, uh, such that you can um, push this package to Conda. And Conda's automated uh, continuous integration system will look for this particular package and um, see whether they are able to access, and then it will able to create a, uh, a Conda package for your software. So, uh, this, oh, this was also like a, a very good initiative from the bioinformatics community side. And uh, uh, at the moment, there are like uh, almost 1,800 active contributors to the community. And uh, they were able to, by Bioconda team managed to bring most of the bioinformatics softwares, like uh, packages, and they are close to I think 10,000 
bioinformatics packages and uh, they were able to make the corresponding conda uh, packages so that uh, you can uh, install with the simple commands like um, uh, conda install and then it will fetch for your package your interested package and install on your local system or your hpc system um so i would say this is a um um a big success story uh from the bioconda community that uh, this same sort of uh standards uh the uh the uh the uh, bioinformatics or like a, a, a workflow managers also uh, uh accepted it and they also tried to uh, use the same conda kind of environment to run their workflows on the HPC system. So uh, on the right hand side, these are some of the uh, like snake make or nextflow. They are the widely used workflow managers inside uh, bioinformatics community. And uh, of course, the data analysis also become more uh, complex, and then and uh, you need to automate most of the steps. And uh, in that case, uh, running individual steps um, with the individual tools is not a good option. And uh, of course, you need to explore the possibilities from the uh, HPC system as well. So. Um, the workflow managers are the real um, player to uh, like, you know, um, improve your ex tool execution. So this has also happened, um, I mean, almost around the same time and they are also growing uh, over the time. And, um, and uh, uh, for example, SnakeMake uh, was a, based on Python and uh, it was also easy to maintain for the bioinformaticians uh, uh, with a different set of conta environments uh, uh, to, to run the large scale um, bioinformatics pipelines. So um, um, at the same time, uh, as I said in the before, uh, before um, virtualization technology was also growing, and uh, if you are uh, so, I, I just put only a few over here. But uh, you know, of course, if you are familiar with the high performance computing platform, you might have heard about the the singularity container. Uh, execution engine and this is very hpc friendly compared to the docker and uh, then uh, the bioinformatics community got attention to that and um, um, especially uh, galaxy as well because uh, both conda and galaxy have like a similar set of the same set of tools uh, all bioinformatics tools and um, uh, we so at that time we were thinking how we could uh, use the um, the existing technologies, the tools, and uh, how we can create singularity containers and uh, um, and ship to the HPC environment as well. So because this was uh, really uh, helping for the Galaxy community as well. So um, at the same time, uh, there was an there was an initiative, or there is an initiative called Bio Containers. Uh, the whole idea is that uh, we use the uh, existing Bioconda recipes to build uh, container images. So Galaxy team developed the technology called Mult, so which is basically Mult. Uh, it's like uh, here we have a conda uh, package and uh, we will have like a, a two different environment uh, one is like a build and the other one is like a runtime so build in, in build basically you do the installation of your preferred software and then um, you create that layer and then transfer that layer into the runtime environment 
So the runtime environment can be like a very minimal uh, thing where uh, you could uh, uh, have the additional layer and then convert that the whole thing into an image. So this is like, um, uh, you can think of a runtime environment as a busy box kind of uh, two megabyte uh, size uh, image. And on top of that, the runtime layer, uh, if you think about a bioinformatics tool, then this is like, you know, um, 15 to 20 megabytes, um, for example, the SAM tools. Uh, and then there are also complex tools as well. But uh, if you take that uh, commonly used tool, then you will get like a very minimal file size for your container if you build images in that in this way. And uh, bio containers uh, started building uh, both Docker and uh, or like um, uh, Docker or singularity based. Uh, uh, images. Initially, they started with the uh, Docker images and then uh, with the uh, uh, singularity images as well. So here, um, so the, the main recipe file here is the um, the met meta file, which I showed uh, in the Conda recipe. And uh, this was the main um, input for uh, building or like installing the 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 conda package on a uh, build environment so here uh, we are not going to like you know write a new docker file uh, to build this image so um, with that um, oh, the uh, when we uh, have this image this is like you know this is just for running this particular tool so you cannot do much changes or modification to that image because this is um, really uh, like built for running that particular tool. Um, so uh, with this, uh, we have uh, uh, 9,874 bioinformatics packages and uh, we have corresponding 95,000 uh, singularity images, which consist of different versions of the tool. And they are uh, stored in uh, three different locations, uh, one in the States, one in Switzerland, and one in Australia. So, and uh, the good part is that uh, uh, you can, uh, the workflow engines also evolved over the time and they were able to take the images directly from the uh, uh, from the an HTTPS location, and they can execute the the whole uh, workflow step and on an HPC system. So this was a big gain, uh, and um, um, so you can see, for example, here uh, I just uh, put a small code snippet from Nextflow and SnakeMake. And here you can see that uh, you can basically say for this particular step, SAM tools, I need to use SAM tools version 1.2, and you can give this address and the workflow engine will take care of fetching that particular tool from, um, from the repository. So uh, here I uh, showed the repository from uh, ETH, and um, yeah, yeah. Similarly, we can put uh, the uh, repos the main Galaxy repository as well. So the bio containers also uh, ho uh, showing this image uh, sh or showing the link, but uh, they will be using uh, the images from our site uh, or Galaxy site. So. Uh, so the whole process of building the images are automated and such that whenever a new con uh, software uh, conduct package uh, arrived then or like a created a new version, then it will automatically create the container and uh, sync with the, all the repository nodes basically. So which which is in place. And um, um, and uh, who is using all these containers? So, uh, of course, uh, 
so both uh, Galaxy and uh, Snake Make, Nextflow, all are giving advertisement that uh, you can use the containers from all these repositories so that uh, you don't have to build your Conda environment to run uh, the um uh, the tools so of course uh, other labs and uh, you know uh, different uh, hpc groups are also trying to use the uh, containers uh, on their hpc system so that uh, they will be able to uh, run without any software installation or you know um, going through the uh, complex step uh, to manage a software um so, so we do have a um, an interface where you can search for um, different uh, tools uh, available uh, on the um, on the container stack, and uh, this is um, where you basically search for. There is a, a page. Uh, this is a work in progress, and we we are going to improve this uh, over here. Uh, at the moment, if you search for like you know uh, Sam tools 1.2 version, so of course you can uh, so the string matches to the other uh, places as well. But still, you can see yeah they are yeah really almost related. And then of course, if you select one of that, and then it will automatically give you the link where you can get this image. And this, you, uh, so if you just copy that and you can include into your workflow or you can download locally. So uh, why we built the, uh, such kind of system, we want the containers close to our ecosystem such that our, our HPC environment uh, didn't have access to the outside world because of the data, uh, the, because of the data, what we handling inside the HPC system. So we need the software stack also uh, close to the um, HPC system. So. And of course, we want to share this, uh, you know, uh, tools to the community as well, so that people can uh, use the uh, the containerized version of the software. And uh, of course, you can, we we will keep all different versions available for the tools, so that uh, if you uh, you can reproduce your result anytime. So uh, with that, I think um, uh, I can uh, uh, like you know mention them, some uh, mention thanks to the people who are helping me and or like you know uh, contributing uh, some of the pieces of work. And uh, I want to thank to the first Galaxy project and Galaxy project in Europe, uh, mostly from the uh, Freiburg University, uh, Nate. Uh, Bjorn and uh, John, so they all are part of the core Galaxy team, and of course with the Bioconda and uh, yeah, many people. Uh, it's a huge effort from the community, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's not possible with the uh, a few people because uh, this is like a uh, I mean collecting almost like ten thousand bioinformatics packages, and from the um zero uh, idiot side, uh, of course. Uh, uh, with the, uh, I mean, uh, software engineering group in Nexus were able to help me to uh, make a good interface to the uh, all uh, container images and uh, HPC storage team. And of course, from other supporting groups. And uh, I have also used some of the GitLab service from ETH to automatically build this container and some of them are not inside the conda where I have to use the uh, re my own recipe and then uh, integrate with the uh, CI/CD system inside ETH to build a, a custom specific um, container images. Uh, and uh, an ongoing effort from our side is to, uh, or like um, uh, uh, to contribute towards the multi. Uh, tool containers where uh, bi uh, bioinformaticians are required to have uh, uh, multiple tools, but we are trying our best to reduce uh, individual step into one single tool uh, to the workflow manager such that we can modularize and uh, 
the whole workflow and also uh, just in case well, we can uh, in, uh, update the um, uh, versions of uh, uh, one single tool and then we don't need to uh, change the whole workflow rather we just uh, uh, make the changes to that module so that way we can keep track of the whole changes and uh, yeah this kind of activities are ongoing and we will of course provide the uh, the website to the public so that you can you will be also able to create such multi tool environment and able to get the um, a downloadable link for your image uh, once it approved or like once it uh, uh, get created inside the system. So we will use the automated uh, system to build this. And uh, of course, uh, if uh, it requires some custom um, uh, engineering, then of course it, it will take some time, but we are trying our best to automate automate the uh, the request uh, based on the requirements, at least if uh, if the customer or the if the user can provide the requirement list, then it will uh, in a, a YAML file, and then it will be able to create the uh, the the tool uh, the the image basically. So um, yeah, with that, uh, I think I will stop here, and uh, I can take some questions.